Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So on, you know, my episodes, I talk a lot about mainstream rackets, popular rackets, players' rackets, pros' rackets. But the one thing that I really don't talk about is transition rackets and rackets that are kind of being missed and segments that are being missed by all the companies. So I'm gonna pa t I'm gonna talk about that today though. Stay tuned. I wanted to actually talk about um, some of the missing segments of tennis rackets that's kind of not on the market today. That really should be though. Um, I've been telling all the manufacturers, you should make all of the mainstream rackets that are already out strung, right? String it with your best strings. Like if you're a head racket, string it with some Hawk touch at, you know, whatever, 55 pounds is going to lose tension on the way here. I get it. Um, Babolat, string it with RPM or string it with some Excel because there's a large segment of the population that just kind of wants to take the racket and go and not have to worry about, you know, waiting to get it strung. Cause I don't know, if you guys aren't a stringer, you know, people kind of, you know, people kind of want it now. We're kind of in a, in a now society now. So it's easier for them to just take and go. I mean, we do that here. We string a couple rackets when we can. And basically I call those the take and goes because I need a good racket and I need it now. So we usually string one of each here with a poly and a synthetic in each grip size of the popular models. And, you know, basically somebody walks in, I need to play right now. Well, there you go. But I feel like it could be cut down a little bit and we could take um, some of the pressure off of the stringers. I'm sure the online guys would probably love that too, because I've been kind of monitoring them and it's taken them up to three days, sometimes up to a week to get a racket out because they have to string it to certain specs that you want. And I understand that certain people want certain specs on a certain string, but I would say at least half of those people would just gladly take it however it's strung. So just because I need it now, I need to play now, give me a racket. And some of those people aren't gonna know the difference, just want a strong racket, okay? So that's where I feel that everybody's kind of missing the boat here. You know, you're going to charge 250 for a racket, put some strings on it, maybe charge 260 or 270 for it, right? They could just take it and go and everybody will be happy. Okay. But it starts with the manufacturers. Um, the other main racket opportunity that I see out there is kind of the transitional racket where they're, the kids are kind of, you know, going from a 26, right, to a 27. And I know that certain people out there have made um, valiant efforts, and, and I commend them for that. Uh, Technofiber was one of them. They made a 26.5 inch racket, which was on the lighter side as a transitional racket from, I would say, like a 12 year old to a 13 year old. And it kind of kept them, you know, happy for about six months to a year, depending on the growth rate. And it kept it light. Um, they were the only ones though. I didn't see too many people out there doing a 26.5. So, I mean, most people kind of go 26 to 27. And then you kind of have to go into, cause that thing is 8.8 .8 before strings. I mean, you're, you're jumping into at least a 9.5, nine, six, nine, seven ounce racket, sometimes up to a 10 ounce racket. Um, but I feel like that 8.8 .8 ounce to a nine ounce racket, that's a 27 is a huge missing market for a lot of people, right? Think about it. 
Think about it. You're you're 12 years old, four foot eight, four foot nine, and you're currently playing with this. But you really should be using an adult racket. It's time to, to move on. But you're actually gonna have to use something that's almost a whole ounce heavier. So I see too many kids going into like an arrow light, right, from this racket, and it's a good ounce heavier. And we, we shouldn't be doing that. So I feel like the missing market, and I only really sell one of them, Drive Z. This is what used to be called Drive Z Light. Okay, now it's called Evo. EVO. Drive Light. Nine ounce racket on a 104 head. I feel like there aren't many comp comp competitors to this, uh, to this racket because I literally sell hundreds of these a year to that kid, that 12 year old, right? Got the zero grip, got the zero grip, got the nine ounce racket, slightly bigger head, and it's strong. So take and go. Price points right about perfect. You get an adult racket, full graphite, easy to go, ready to play. All right, it's the only one that's that I have in this category. Therefore, it's what I sell. I mean, I would love for maybe these guys to do some colors because it only comes in this blue right now. So, you know, but I wish, I wish more people would do this. During pandemic, we saw a rise in, you know, these, these rackets and these are kind of like the, the take and goes of the tennis industry, kind of like the 102 head on a 10.2 that's on strong weight and it's strong, ready to go. Right. I do. I don't normally carry these. Um, it, they were just, you know, kind of like the take and go for Christmas presents. This is why I have these. So it's meant for, I mean, yeah, just people who really want to play. I get them in small grips just because, just in case I have that 13 or 14 year old that has small hands still, or that woman, right, to get these. But this is kind of the emerging market of it. Um, I would like the companies to think, you know, high end rackets instead of, you know, kind of pigeonholing everybody into this kind of the 199 to, to 129 thing on, on these. Cause you guys deserve a little better than this when it comes to pretty strong rackets. So you guys know I'm a big fan of the burn, right? This is a price point racket that we sell a ton of every year. Unfortunately, they're going to discontinue this next year. And there is, seems to be no replacement of it. But I feel like this market, you know, there's an open market for this too. Kind of like the, what do I call it? The old resurrection, let's say. So the racket's done. It's dead. It's gone, but it's not buried because it's coming back, right? Wilson is known for doing that. Hyper Hammer is still around. They're at Big Five. They're at Dick's, right? But they only are in those markets. They don't sell the specialty like us. Um, they, you can, because they're pre-strung and they're price point rackets, like we don't get those, you know, like the head TIS sixes that are still super popular. We don't get to get those because that's a big box store racket. I feel like we should have kind of a premium price point racket, you know, just like this too. So I feel like kind of we're missing the boat. They're missing the boat on giving us that opportunity. So the direction that I'm taking with this is I feel like because of time crunches, you know, stringing getting backed up, people wanting to play immediately. And we're living in kind of the the Amazon days of, you know, prime, meaning everybody wants it now that, you know, the manufacturers can, you know, give us premium, better tennis rackets that are strong, at least give us the option of that. 
Do you guys agree with me? I know you people that are pretty particular about your strings won't, but I'm sure some of you will that are always in a rush. All right. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.